Alright, well, hello there, YouTube. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me lately about um, how to play overall in general tips. Well, the first thing is obviously aiming. You can learn grenade spots, you can learn camping spots, but most of all you have to learn how to aim, right? And people think, oh, it's just, um, you know, but it's not like that. You have to get in good positioning. And to talk about positioning, this is a good example. If you're sitting like this, right up against the wall, he's going to come around the corner like this, and he's going to see you first. So it's not as good. If you're going to cover a doorway, you should go at an angle like this. So then you see each other at about the same time, and it's even. Except for the fact that he's half the move, so his crosshair is a little bit bigger. Now, if you're sitting right here, it's better to move left than right. Because when he comes around here and he sees you, if he sees you going left and right, it's going to be harder for him to hit you. If you're the guy that's going around the corner, on the other hand, you might want to shift so that your crosshair stays small. And as soon as you see him, you want to duck or jump. The jumping makes your crosshair bigger, but it catches him off guard. And if you crouch, it um, they'll be shooting at you, and they'll think that you're safe. And if they're aiming for a headshot, they'll totally miss you. But you don't want to stay crouched, because if you stay crouched, it's easier to get a headshot. The second part about aiming is uh, where you aim. If you're a less experienced player, you may want to aim at the chest, which is um, on this wall specifically. But if you're getting more experienced or using less real cons, just the SD, uh, 5.56 or the M4A1, you're going to want to aim right here on head level. If you're aiming, because if you shoot too much, it goes up. And if you're at a greater distance with the gun like the pair, which is what I recall, you may want to. Or but other than that, for aiming, there's other things as well, such as pre fire, which is. Say that I know there's a guy around this corner, instead of just waiting until I see him shooting. If I have an ammo, that was a bad example, I fell on big cross. That way you're automatically shooting at him. And unless he's pre-firing you back, you're going to get the first two or three shots on him before he can even respond. And if he lags or he lags, you're going to have an even greater advantage when you're pre-firing. Now say that you think somebody is here, but you don't know for sure. You weren't going to want to pre-fire because if they're not there, you're just wasting ammo. You're going to do what we call pre-aiming. So you're going to look at that spot, like, you know, because you know it's there through the wall. But don't shoot, and then when you come around, if you're Mission there, time complete. Operation say, success. Like, Return you know, to main you base. Your effort is have more of a movement. The other tips for aiming would be, um, you might want to lower your sensitivity because when you have higher sensitivity and DPI, you're going to... You know, like, hold on. Have it up this high. Let's see, I'll try to... I'll try to hit it. Not too bad, but now let's lower it. It's just more... Obviously. So, you want to lower your DPI if you have a gaming mouse. My sensitivity game is floating around 11 or 12 which is usually. I use 800 DPI. Another thing is um, computers. Say that you get 30 FPS, you're not going to perform usually as well as somebody with 60 FPS. And that's just because when you spike to lower FPS, you know, just freeze, right? You know what I'm talking about. What you want to do to fix that is try to um, lower your graphics to the lowest in the options tab, and if that doesn't work, try to. Um, you know, buy, like take an outside real life fan and put it next to the computer so you get more air in and it cools down faster. Or, if you have the money, you can buy a new computer or something of the source so you can get higher FPS. Other than FPS, you want to turn on shadows because if somebody's on a roof above you, you can see the shadow through the floor, like on this generator room right here. If somebody's above me, right around here, I can see their shadow. And if I know it, I can see a shadow. I can see have shadows on, and I recommend high detail characters because when they're a little bit blurry, they can sometimes blend into the wall for me. And so, higher details make it easier to get a headshot. 
Resolution, a lot of people say 800 by 600, but I prefer higher. Just personally. Now let's go on the tactics. If you're playing with a teammate, and you're gonna, um... And instead of going one person going out there and dying, and the next person has to go and die, which is what a lot of bad clans do, what you want to do is, you know, open this door and make have more people push out at the same time, but not from the same place, because it's a small area. If you're trying to push out of a small area, you don't all four want to go right here, because if um, the defender is right here, and all four of you can shoot pretty much kill you all at once. So the trick is, you got to go together, so that you have the number advantage. And uh, if anything, if you're really bad, they'll run out of ammo and you can still kill them. But you don't want to do it in a way so you all push out and you know line up and get multi kill. Mission time complete. Tactics. Operation success. Return to main base. Your efforts are commended. The other kind of tactics as like NRF is if you play middle on maps or base or something. Other than watching middle, what you gotta be careful, um, when they call out a site, you're gonna rotate fast and help out that site usually. And if you're covering a site, your job primarily is the first thing you do when you see somebody or see an aid, you call it out so you, your teammates have an idea of if they need to rotate or not. But don't call it out too early because if you're all wrong, then um, it's really easy for the enemy to get to the other site. And a common misconception is if the enemy gets a site, then it's really hard to get it back. Sometimes it's better. If you're low HP and you're the only one to back out, let them take the site and then push it later. Because otherwise you might just end up sacrificing your site. And the other thing about covering a site is, usually it's better to know nade spots if you're covering a site. Brosa, you're you with this, you know, when you're in mid, you don't really need the nade spot as much, I would say. Because your primary job is just to rotate it again. Um, for more advanced tactics on EU, something called rotating for a few times, which is say that they think you're going when they don't go. You don't make a distraction, which is the maze, smoke, UAV shooting. But don't try to be too obvious about it with one or two people. And have the rest of the guys, you know, silently, like this, fall back and uh, rotate to the other side. So hopefully you can get the enemy team picking either one and they'll get their people to rotate to one and maybe leave them. No one, hopefully, or one person on the other side. And then you can, you know, come to the other side with like four to three people and, you know, easily kill him or plant the bomb and then they have to take it back. Another thing is when the bomb is planted, you don't want to go in a spot like this and just, you know, watch a door. Because then, unless you, if you don't know the enemy could be here, coming from this side, you could die. Don't have both sides locked down. You might want to go in positions like this so you can't be seen from the other side and watch a door or watch, the, you know, this vent. So, if you have teammates, you're going to have like one person watching over here, one person watching there, and one person there. You just have to have somebody watch every entrance. And you can't assume that an entrance is uh, for sure not being hit by an enemy unless you have a teammate there. So, if it's 1v2, you're not going to be right here. You're going to be either like right here, which you can look under this, or you can go over here. But what you don't want to do is go like here, because then you're watching one doorway. They can see you from that and that. So, I would play comfortably right here, because then you can see and here the vent. So, you just got to be smart about your position like that. A couple other tricks. If you have the C4, and or if you're defusing as NRF, and um... It's you versus an enemy too. And Mission you want time them to come complete. In. You can Operation switch, switch success. Like Return this. to main base. Your efforts and are it'll commended. Make them think that you're defusing and they'll come. You got to you be watching out for them. And you know that they're there and you know they're coming to the other hand. Because I think you're doing the cook trick, which really, by the way, doesn't help at all. And uh, another trick: say that you're EU, or and the bomb is down. So my teammate dropped the bomb over here, and I think the enemy is inside too waiting. You could uh, drop the binos, <laughs> the binos, and it'll sound like you picked up the binos, you fire them and they come around. Or you can pick up a weapon or something of the sort. Another common thing you'll see in videos of good players is they'll drop the C4. 
like um I'm on EU, NRF is in the uh, generator. I might drop the C4 over here. That way if I get, you know, naded or gunned over here, I don't lose the C4. My team can pick up the C4 and go that way. Dropping the C4, you don't drop it somewhere obvious. You wanna put it in a spot where you small commander But you don't wanna leave it too far behind because if the C4 is down here and we push up past this, then it's a trouble to go back and get it. So you gotta be careful. Those are just basic tips other than you know grenade spots and camping spots. Those things are more not specific. 